right, and we're live. Welcome. Uh, live from the living room. And uh, we're glad that you're joining us. I'm sure that people will be coming in. If you're a Faith Horizon group, you know that uh, our generally, uh, our start time is a, a recommendation or a suggestion, not a hard and fast thing. And so uh, a couple of things that we want to look at. If you'd like to continue giving during the COVID-19 precautions, please send tithe and offering checks to the following addresses, either uh, to our church treasurer, which would, that would allow her not to have to go to the post office uh, and be able to manage the church finances uh, and still observe the precautions. Or you can send it to our regular church mailing address at P.O. Box 1978, Yuma, Arizona, 85364. So uh, this is uh, a different thing for us, but we're glad you're here. All right, we're going to actually start close to on time. And so our, uh, our message today is close communion in an age of social distancing. We're going to be looking at passages in Luke chapter 22. We're going to look at verses 7 and 8 and 15 through 20. This is about the Lord's Supper, uh, the night that Christ instituted uh, the remembrance uh, of his uh, death and resurrection before his death and resurrection. And we will see it as a fulfillment of the Passover. And so as we get started, I just want to kind of catch you up or, or give you a uh, uh, a picture of where we are this morning. First of all, we're desiring to render unto Caesar while continuing our devotion to the worship of the one true God and Christian fellowship. Uh, we're observing the precautionary measures. And uh, there are a, a few things in life that are not uh, very romantic. Uh, prevention and maintenance. And so... Uh, we're in that uh, prevention area, and it's not, uh, it's not romantic. It's not exciting. It's, uh, eh, it's kind of a drag. But we're doing it uh, in hopes that uh, members of our congregation can avoid uh, a virus, uh, also to show solidarity with our community. Uh, but we still want to reach out, and we also want to spend time in worship and uh, in Christian fellowship, and you say, well, how can we do uh, Christian fellowship? Uh, we can still be connected even on this. Now, i got to admit, I have my own personal feelings of guilt this morning. Preachers believe they ought to be in church on Sunday. And uh, so going live from the living room is kind of a fun idea, but uh, I, I really struggled with having some guilt feelings about that. And uh, But... This is what we're doing so we can reach as many people as possible uh, while putting as few as uh, a few people as possible at risk. Now, also, the final thing is do not be deceived. This is just a substitute for the real thing. Our gathering together as a body of Christ, as believers coming together, uh, cannot be downplayed or replaced. We need to uh, focus on that. And so uh, after... Uh, after the precautions are done, after we're through uh, this high point of the virus, listen, we, uh, we need to continue to gather together uh, in praise and worship and fellowship and Bible study, uh, in ministry and missions tasks, uh, working together, sharing together, living together, and, and serving Jesus together. Uh, another aspect of this is uh, we have a wonderful opportunity right now to demonstrate the organic living nature of the church. We are the body of Christ. We are not a building. We are not a location. We are not an organization. We are a living organism. We are Holy Spirit breathed, guided, convicted, and directed. We are Jesus Christ commissioned. And uh, we're not confined to a meeting place. We are the tent of meeting. As in, you have the indwelling Holy Spirit in you, then you are the tabernacle of God's presence. And, and so uh, that's kind of where we're starting. I want to point out this. Social media has provided a false sense of connection and quietly ushered in an age of social distancing. 
No, we're more connected than ever. Are we? We text more and talk less. We look in on with a short commentary, but we eschew true relational interaction. We see more, but truly we know each other less. And so this is an opportunity for us to, to kind of recognize some of those issues, recognize some of those things that have crept in on us, and, uh, and break through them. A and break through them. We have an opportunity to recapture Christian fellowship and community, which uh, leads me to this. And I know we're, we're going to get into the scripture and to the message uh, in just a moment. But uh, I want to issue to everyone who's participating with us today, whether you're a member of Faith Horizon Baptist Church, whether you're one of our family members or a family member of a Faith Horizon family member, or, or someone from the community who's uh, looking for a church home or just needs some encouragement, I want to issue a two-call challenge. And uh, what I would ask you to do is each day this week, Make two phone calls, one to a church member, one to someone that you fellowship with. Catch up and ask, how can I pray for you? Then pray for and with them. Now the second one is, make a phone call to a family member, a neighbor, a friend, or a co-worker and follow the same plan. How are you doing? It might be good for us to talk about some of our anxious thoughts and our, our fears and our concerns and pray about that and pray with one another so that we can, uh, can root those things out and not feel so alone. So uh, here's what I ask you to do. If you're willing to take that challenge, just put a comment on the live stream right now. Give me an, an amen or I'm with you, will do, something like that. So uh, we can, uh, can kind of see some encouragement together uh, as we do this. Make that two-call challenge. And there's an opportunity for us to become even more connected in the face of distancing. Now, regarding the communion service, the observance. We are going to observe communion at the end of the session, uh, at the end of the message. Remember, it is meaning, not method or mode. That holy communion is a matter of the heart it's not the elements of the observance. And we need to focus on the remembrance and not the presentation. All right? We want to make sure that it's a matter of the heart and not a matter of ritual. In Isaiah chapter 29, uh, verse 13 and 14 says, The Lord said, Because these people approached me with their mouths to honor me with lip service, yet their hearts are far from me. Their worship consists of man-made rules learned by rote, Therefore, I will again confound these people with wonder after wonder. The wisdom of their wise men will vanish, and the understanding of the perceptive will be hidden. And by the way, Jesus quoted this passage in Matthew 15, that it's a matter of the heart. The elements are a physical, uh, visible reminder of the gospel, but your heart for God is the key. So uh, whether you're using water, iced tea, uh, we're using blood orange Italian soda because it's almost red. Uh, whether you're using bread, matzo, crackers, that's not the issue. The issue is, do you have a heart for God? You know, you could have matzo made in Jerusalem. You could have wine uh, made from grapes grown on the Mount of Olives. And if you don't have a heart for God, if it's not about remembering and honoring and praising Jesus for his broken body and his blood, all those elements are just material things with no meaning. And so as we, we go into that, uh, it all comes down to what we've been talking about for the past four weeks. It comes down to our focus, the search for what matters most. We've been studying Luke chapter 12, verse 4 and 5. Talk, Jesus teaches about fearing God. In verse 8, we're told to acknowledge Jesus as Lord so that he would acknowledge us before God and the holy angels. Then we go on, he says, be rich toward God. This is an opportunity for us to be rich toward God in giving him our, our time, our commitment, and our hearts. And then we always want to be ready for his return. So with all of that in mind, let's get into the text. 
So if you have a Bible, uh, you should read it and uh, follow along. The passage will be on the screen. I'm going to be using the Holman Christian Standard the, or the CSB uh, version for all of the scripture text this morning. All right. And so we're going to look at Luke chapter 22. We're going to start in verse 7 uh, and 8 and then also look at verses 10 through 15. Then the day of the unleavened bread came when the Passover lamb had to be sacrificed. And Jesus sent Peter and John saying, Go and prepare the Passover meal for us so we can eat it. Notice it's a time of Passover, the observance of Passover. The Passover was to be fulfilled in God's kingdom. Go back to that passage and look at, at the... Uh, uh, underlined uh, passage part. I've deserved, uh, I have fervently desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer, for I tell you I will not eat it again until it is fulfilled. The Passover is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. You see, the Passover of the Exodus was an illustration. It was a foreshadowing of the eternal Passover provided by the Lamb of God, Jesus Christ. Now in the Old Testament, in the book of Exodus, the Passover and Exodus spared the Hebrews from physical death. And We remember that verse in, in Exodus 11, when I see the blood, when I see the blood on the doorpost of your house, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And so this was a physical deliverance. But what Jesus was preparing his disciples for and what he has left us to remember in the observance of communion is that today the Passover in Christ provides salvation and eternal life to all who believe, repent, and acknowledge God's sovereignty in their lives. That is, we believe in Christ Jesus as Lord and Savior. We repent of our sins in our old life we put away those things that we have elevated above God and we place God on the throne of our hearts. We acknowledge his sovereignty in our lives and he, uh, his right uh, to guide, to direct, and, and to provide for us as he sees fit. So in this passage, Jesus anticipates the culmination of God's plan, the Passover for all forever. So if you go to the end of the Bible and read the book of Revelation, they're, they're trying to say, who can open the seals of God's book of life? Well, the only one worthy was the Lamb of God, the Lamb that was slain, the Passover Lamb. And so as Jesus says this, he's anticipating the climax or the culmination of God's plan as he was going to the cross to die in your place, to die in my place, shedding his blood, and then vanquishing death on the third day through the power of his resurrection. So as we go on to verse 15 through 20, For I tell you, I will not eat it again until it's fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he said, Take this and share it among yourselves. For I tell you, from now on, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took bread, and he gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to them, and said, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. So Jesus is adding meaning to an ancient ritual. Think about it. Uh, the Passover had been around for thousands of years. It, it was something uh, that had been instituted when uh, the, the people of, uh, of Israel, the, the Hebrew people, uh, Brought, came out of uh, e Egyptian bondage, and we begin that period of the Exodus, a and we look at that, we see the deliverance in that, and so it's an ancient custom, and it had those me uh, had a very set meaning. It was a meaning to uh, to commemorate, to look back at God's deliverance. Now Jesus is adding a new meaning to that. He's adding a twist to that. He's adding the culmination, the fulfillment. I want you to think about traditions. We like our traditions, right? Uh, you know, this is 
March Madness weekend, Final Four weekend. It's a tradition, and uh, and so the the basketball junkies are, are are needing a fix, and they're watching things from 1992 and going, oh yeah, and and trying to get through that. It's a tradition. We have our traditions. Listen. This is Palm Sunday, and I almost uh, borrowed some palm fronds from uh, from Don Vicker, uh, Don Vickers, uh, but I was told that I would not be able to bring them in. So since we're live from the living room, we couldn't do that today. Anyway, yeah, you know, we have our traditions on these things. Well, Jesus was adding a new meaning to an old tradition, but he was uh, taking it from a physical remembrance to a, fear, a spiritual fulfillment to a spiritual fulfillment. And he says, listen, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When we think about the broken body of Christ, probably the best passage to describe that's found in Isaiah chapter 53, where he says, yet he himself, the Lamb of God, Jesus, bore our sicknesses and he carried our pains. But we in turn regarded him stricken, struck down by God and afflicted. And he was pierced, 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 pierced because of our transgressions and our and crushed because of our iniquities. Punishment for our peace was on him. We have peace with God because Jesus Christ took our punishment on his body. And we are healed by his wounds. We all went astray like sheep. We all have turned to our own way. And the Lord has punished him for the iniquity of of us all. And so as Jesus is sharing uh, this, this Passover uh, celebration with his disciples, he's wanting to point them towards a new covenant, a new fulfillment, where he would take the sins of the world from beginning to end. That's you, that's me, that's, that's everyone uh, who would trust Christ. He takes our sins from us. He bears our sins. He bears our guilt. He bears our shame. He takes it all. And he bore the brunt of our punishment in his body. And we're washed clean by his blood. So when he offers that bread, we, he offers that, that uh, feast, that juice, uh, then uh, these are symbols of our sin being washed away and our punishment being fulfilled. Substitutionary atonement. I know. That sounds so not politically correct today, but it's the basic Christian doctrine of the faith that salvation comes through Christ alone. All right. In verse uh, 20 says, in the same way he also took the cup after supper and said, this cup is the new covenant established by my blood. It is shed for you. It is shed for you. Ephesians 1, 7 and 8 says, We have redemption in him through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace that he has lavished on us with all wisdom and understanding. We are redeemed. We are bought with a price by the blood of Christ according to the riches of his grace. And he lavishes on us with all wisdom and understanding. Uh, 1 Corinthians 6, 19 says that you're the temple of the Holy Spirit. You were bought with a price. And we're to glorify God in our body and our spirit and our minds which belong to him. We're not our own. Because we have redemption in him, in Jesus, through his blood. So with this in mind, Let's not engage in a tried and true ritual. Let's not reduce the Lord's Supper or taking communion together to just tradition and practice. I thought about bringing uh, the uh, communion trays from the church over and, and, and having them here kind of as a, as a reminder. But, you know, truthfully, all of those things are unnecessary. What is necessary? What is necessary is, is a heart and a mind, someone taking the time 
to contemplate, to remember, to give thanks, to recommit, to recalibrate life because of the broken body and the shed blood of Jesus Christ. Let's not focus more attention on the elements of communion than the reality of our communion with God in Christ. Can you get ours ready? Obviously, uh, if things were going to go uh, in a perfect world, I would have all these things out here. But that was the one thing, well, one of the things that didn't get done this morning. Uh, so we, we don't want to focus more attention on the elements of communion than the reality of our communion with God and one another in Christ. And so once again... As we uh, prepare to take communion, as we can prepare to, to share in this together, and I want you to think about what this could be. We are the, the body of Christ throughout the country. We're the body of Christ throughout the world. And, and here today, all across the country, people from their homes are participating in worship. They're, they're participating uh, in a celebration of their faith together through video and, and broadcast mediums. We have the opportunity now to share uh, one of the basic ordinances of the faith, uh, Holy Communion together. And this is a chance for us to connect. One thing I will ask you to do is after we do take communion, if you could again uh, type in an amen or uh, in some kind of encouraging word that shows that you participated in the observance with us, uh, just so we can have that together to see uh, how uh, how many and, and, and who are participating with us today. We, we want this to be a meaningful time. And so as we do that, uh, it all comes down to our focus. Going back to Luke chapter 12, the search for what matters most Fear God, acknowledge Jesus as Lord, be rich toward God, and be ready for his return. And so, at this point, I want us, before we take communion together, I want us to pause, pause for a time of reflection. I'm going to lead you through a guided time of prayer. I'm going to lead you through a, a guided time of prayer. Okay? And so as we look at this, before we take communion today, I want us to think, confession. Are all sins confessed? Is there something in my heart or in my life that I need to, to lay before the throne of God? That I need to say, Lord Jesus, I know that, that this is an issue that... Uh, I, I have tried to hold in that I've tried to hide. I need to confess my sin. Uh, and so let's take a moment to, to do that, to prayerfully, just to have that moment of confession. Father God, we come to you as sinners saved by grace, redeemed by the blood of Jesus. Lord, you know our heart. We confess our sins and our sinnership, but we claim your grace and your mercy in Jesus' name through the power of his blood. Father, forgive us of our sins as we forgive those who trespass against us. In Jesus' name, amen. The second thing, do I need to extend forgiveness to others? Is there someone in your life that you're holding on to an anger, a bitterness, a grudge? You're, you're holding on to, to, uh, to uh, the things of the flesh in regard to this individual. And you need to extend forgiveness to others. Jesus basically tells us that if we want to be forgiven, we have to be forgiving. Do you need, do I need to extend forgiveness to others? Father in heaven, we come to you. We thank you for your grace and forgiveness. Lord, there are people in my life that I need to extend forgiveness to that I've held on to feelings of anger, resentment, 
that I, uh, I've held on to feelings that cloud my vision of you. Lord, I extend forgiveness from my heart to that person. And I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Do I need to seek forgiveness from others? Maybe I know that uh, there's someone who has something against me. And I know that there's someone that, that I have wronged or I have harmed. Do I need to seek forgiveness from others? Again, let's take a moment to pray. Father in heaven, we ask that you, Lord, that we would have the courage and the wisdom to seek forgiveness from those that we have wronged. That we would uh, humble ourselves for your glory and seek to make those relationships right. In Jesus' name, amen. And then the final part is this. Am I acknowledging Christ in my daily life, in my daily living? You know, the ordinance of the church, communion, the Lord's Supper, it's a wonderful and beautiful thing. But it's not as important as acknowledging Jesus as Lord daily. It's not as important as giving God the glory and giving God sovereignty in your life and in your heart and your mind on a, on a daily basis. If you're like me, I have to do that on an hourly basis and sometimes on a minute-by-minute -minute basis because of my stinky, old, rotten, nasty sin nature. Who I am. And so, as we prepare to take the Lord's Supper together, am I acknowledging Christ in my daily life and living? Father God, we ask that you would give us the wisdom, the courage, the wherewithal to seek you daily. To trust you with all of our heart. To not lean into our own understanding. Acknowledge you in all our ways so that you might make our path straight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Communion and Lord's Supper is all about Jesus. Testified by the Spirit at baptism. Approved by the Father at baptism. Predicted by the prophets. Sacrificed as eternal Passover lamb on the cross. Victorious over death through his resurrection glorified and exalted in heaven forever and ever. Something that we will get to share. And also we need to remember in this time that God, the eternal God, will deliver us through our temporal problems and in times of precaution. I don't want to say crisis. We're taking precautions. We're being preventative. We're, we're taking action. We need to remember who God is. Remember who you are in Christ. Remember God's power and faithfulness. Remember God's promise and continue in his comforter, the Holy Spirit, in the strength of his comforter. And the eternal God will deliver us through our temporal problems. With that said, at this time, we're going to begin our observance of the Lord's Supper. I'm enough old-fashioned to think that you kind of need a leather-bound Bible in your hand uh, when you read the Scripture to do the Lord's Supper. I know, I told you before, it's not about the elements, uh, but we're, we all have those little things there. And so, we want to look at verse 19, and we want to think about the bread, his body broken for us. This time I'd ask you to take your, your cracker, your wafer, uh, your matzah, uh, your bagel, wh whatever you're using this morning. He took the bread, he gave thanks, he broke it and gave it to them and said, This body, this is my body which is given for you. 
do this in remembrance of me. Father God, together as a congregation, as friends and family, as fellow believers in Christ, we give thanks for the body of Christ broken for us, that by his stripes we are healed, that he bore the brunt of our sin's punishment to make peace with you available for all who would believe. We claim that peace by the broken body of Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In the same way, he also took the cup after supper and said, This cup is the new covenant established by, by my blood. It is shed for you. It's the cup of the new covenant. In his blood, we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. Father God, as a congregation, as friends and family, as fellow believers uh, across the city, across uh, the nation, we come to you today thankful that we are redeemed by the blood of the Lamb of God. And our redemption carries us from here through the hereafter. Uh, one day we will set at the wedding, wedding feast of the bride. And it's all made possible. The price was all paid by the blood shed on the cross for us. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for dying for us. Thank you for saving us, Jesus. We do this in remembrance of you. Amen. Matthew records it after they took uh, the cup uh, they sang a uh, hymn together. And so uh, I thought, what could we all sing? What would we all know? And uh, I settled on Jesus Loves Me. So right where you are, wherever you are, join with me and we'll sing. Jesus loves me, this I know. For the Bible tells me so, little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me, the Bible tells me so. If you participate in the observance, please put an amen uh, or a yes, some kind of comment. We thank you for sharing this time together. And I want to give you a final benediction. May the grace of God and his blessed presence carry you through this time of trouble. May you find his grace and his Holy Spirit to be a source of reassurance and strength. May he give you the wisdom and the courage to seek him, to follow him, to trust him in dark days. And we thank him in advance for the deliverance and uh, our time when we get to come together as the body of Christ in person again. May God bless you and keep you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for sharing this time with us. Have a blessed week in the Lord. Hey, to call challenge, call a church member, call a friend or a family member. Let's get connected, even in a time of social distancing. Amen. Have a great day. Hit the off button. Finish? Yep. <laughs>